As you preview your 5.3 shipping and taxes assignment, you're going to notice a couple of new columns for this particular spreadsheet. Before we start completing any of the tasks, let's just take a look at what we're going to be adding and what we're going to do with the assignment. These are the seven items that I was purchasing for $200. So you're not going to have to input any more of the information with the store, the item, and the link description. And I've even included the price. If you look here, we even have the price and the quantity and the item totals. But you'll notice there are two additional uh, columns in this example, and you have this example tab to look at as well. It's called shipping and taxes. Now, if you had to go through and type all of this in, it would take you a while. And the beauty of spreadsheets is it helps us to save time. Remember, we're just working with a small sample, but if you worked for a company or you start working, as you start working your first jobs here, you'll have a better understanding of the vast amount of data that we work with. But just for practicing for this class, the sampling that we use helps us to really understand a little bit more about the concepts and the terms. So if you were to buy, now we know Amazon does free shipping and we don't even have to, we do have to pay taxes, but a lot of times we don't have to pay any shipping, but we're gonna just pretend that every item that we purchased, we now need to add in shipping and taxes along with that quantity to get the full item price. So we're gonna do some additional simple formulas for this assignment. Now, practicality is gonna tell us when you're figuring these things out, when you've got the price and you're trying to figure out the shipping, the shipping and taxes should be relative to the price that we're paying. So if we have a $45 item, that's gonna be almost four times what the tax would be for an item that's $11. So always look at the numbers when you're making your computations. Remember, you are smarter than your computer. You're the one that has to tell your computer what to do. You always wanna make sure you're entering in the correct data for your assignments. So let's get started with this assignment. That walks you through tasks one and two. We're just doing some, again, some reviews of basic basic vocabulary. Make sure you understand the mathematical operators and that we're doing formulas and we're using cell references to create simple formulas. Make sure you know where the name box is and how you can navigate the formula bar. Remember to rename the title and by now you should be really good at renaming the worksheet. Now we are on task four. We're gonna edit the spreadsheet. We're going to recalculate with additional expenses. So what we want to do is we want to insert a column and we're going to insert the column to the right of the price. So you're gonna click on the E. Don't just click in the column somewhere. You're gonna click on that E, that column, column label. And we're going up here to insert and we're gonna insert a column to the right. And if you mess up, just do a Command Z and you can bring that right back so that it's right where you need it to be. We're gonna put a column heading on this one and we're gonna call it Shipping. Now we need one more column to the right of Shipping and that one is for Taxes. So we're gonna click on this column F and we're gonna go up here to Insert and we're gonna do a column to the right and we're gonna label this one taxes. That's all you have to do for task four. If you want to finish that quickly, come on back and I'll help you with calculating those charges. All right, let's start with shipping. Shipping is going to be 5% of the total price or what the price was. Now, I wrote that on your checklist. I hope you learned this like in elementary or middle school, but whenever you hear the word of, that's a hint that you are going to be doing a multiplication. So 5% of is the same as that cell reference times 0 0.05. So I'm sure you probably have learned that little trick before, but I'm gonna show you how to calculate this simple formula for our shipping costs. So we're gonna use cell referencing, but remember we always, always, always start with an equal sign. So the shipping is equal to, we're gonna cell reference E3. You're gonna click on cell E3, and this time we're gonna take it times 
zero, five. That would be the same as 5% and hit your return. So if we were to say this in our head, it would be shipping is 5% of the price. And that one should say 60 cents. So you can check your work on that one. When you get that done, we're gonna go ahead and calculate our taxes. Now you're gonna have to skip the shipping row. We have to go back to our prices. We're not gonna just go next to this one to use this, write this simple formula. We're gonna click in cell G3, double click. You're gonna start with your equal sign and it's gonna try to tell you what it wants you to do. Don't listen to it. Close out of it because that's not what we want to do. We're gonna do equals this price the price of that book times multiplication, and this time it's going to be 7% of that price for the book. So of, and it's 0 0.07 would be 7%. Now you can make a prediction here. This was 5%, this was 7%. Which of these two is going to be more expensive, the shipping or the taxes? It should be, we're not gonna do this one either, close out of it. It should be just a little bit more than the shipping. All right, if you wanna go ahead and do that, that's great. Come on back, that is your task five. Now task six, we're gonna save some time. You don't have to do that for every single row. We don't have to do it for the baseball cap or the socks or the milk frother. We're simply going to use our fill tool and we're going to drag that fill down and it's gonna take it all the way down here. And that last row, if you check your work, it should be, oh, what did I do wrong here? Shipping, I might have to go back and check um, the example, but that should be your example. I'm gonna check mine here to make sure I have that right. 0.5%, that looks correct. So I'll go back and make sure that that's right. But this is what yours should look like, all right? Taxes is the same thing. We're going to click up here at that $84. We're going to fill down. And your taxes should be just a little higher than what the shipping costs would be. So check your work with this and I'll have the right example in there. This is what your totals should look like. If you wanna double check it, it's that E9 times 7%, and there's your total for that. All right, go ahead and do those fills. That is your task six. Come on back and we will get, we will work on task seven. Now I want you to edit some prices here. I want you to change the 32.25. I want you to change that to $45. And when you do that, that's our example here. When you change that to $45, now let's look at your example. It should say $2.25. Notice how you didn't have to update that formula. It changed it automatically. That is why we like cell referencing. Now, the one that says $14.48 right here in cell E7, let's change that one to a simple $10 and make a prediction what's going to happen here with these amounts. Well, that's pretty simple. 50 cents, 70 cents, 5%, 7%. So that's kind of one way we're gonna check our work. And if you looked at the example, yours now looks just like the example and you didn't have to type all of that in there. That is your task seven. Come on back and we're gonna edit these totals in our column I. I'm gonna adjust this back to 100 so you can see that this is right here on the edge of the spreadsheet. For this task, we want to delete the content. Now, even though we're deleting the content, the formatting is going to stay there so we don't have to write in the dollar signs. Do not delete this one. If you deleted that one by accident, do a Command Z to get it back. We still want to make sure we can figure this out to get close to $200. So only delete those cells, I3 through I9. That's task eight. Task nine says we're gonna rewrite a new simple formula in this cell I3. Remember, it always starts with an equal sign. So if you wanna put that equal sign in there, now watch how easy this is. 
but I even gave it to you in the checklist. If you need to double check your checklist, I wrote that out for you so that you would have it. Let me scroll down here. Look at it, but we're gonna take a look and see how this works. It's equals, we're gonna add those three and then multiply it to, to that cell reference. But before you check that, let's just do this so that it makes sense what we're doing. What we're gonna add is the price of the book, add the shipping, add the taxes, all of those three things are gonna get added together and then we're gonna multiply that sum together to get our total price. So here's how this works. And there's multiple ways you could do this, but I'm gonna show you a way that takes you back to when you were doing this, when you started your basic mathematical computations. We're gonna start with the left parentheses, and then we're gonna cell reference the price, and then we're gonna do a plus sign, the shipping, and then we're gonna do another plus sign, and the taxes. Don't forget the right parentheses. Why are we cell referencing? Because we're lazy, because we wanna be able to fill down, because we wanna know if we change the prices, it will recalculate. We want to do things so that it takes as little effort as possible. You're not done yet though, because we still have to multiply it by the number, the quantity of what we're purchasing. We're not gonna do a times two, because that wouldn't work when we only buy one or when we wanna make sure that it just references this cell. So we're gonna take it times whatever's in cell H3. Now I could type H3, but it's a lot easier to just click on the cell and then the, the formula will automatically drop for you. I'm gonna hit my return and it will calculate that for me automatically. Now I only have to do that one time, I can fill down and it's smart enough to know that each row is going to be calculated based on the data that's in that specific row. So when I look at my Huggies diaper, 45 plus two plus three, that looks like I could estimate that to be about $50.40. Pretty sweet. That is your task nine. Come on back and we'll wrap it up with task 10. All right, well, the problem is now, um, I've gone over my $200. I now have $229.72 because of the taxes. So what can I do to get this below 200? Well, if I look at my prices of things here, it looks like my socks are $28. Um, and then I've got the taxes. I think if I change this to one pair of socks, it will automatically drop it down. So now I'm just about $2 below the 200. So now, now that I've taken in the shipping and taxes, I'm all good to go, I'm still under my $200. You are done with this one, you're ready to turn it in, you're ready to write a comment and tell us what you learned by completing this assignment.